Hello friends, my name is Dr. Babli Chaudhary and I am a teacher educator. So friends, today we are going to study about development of personality, where we will study about the nature and concept of personality, we will discuss about the characteristics of personality, then development of personality and the role of the teacher in the personality development. So friends, the term personality is derived from the Latin word persona, which that was associated with theatre in the ancient times. Persona means a mask which the Roman actors commonly used to wear when they worked on the stage. In this sense, personality means the individual as seen by others. Personality is the totality of everything about a person, his or her physical, emotional, mental, ethical, social and spiritual makeup. So friends, in simple terms, personality consists of the following, the way we look, the way we dress, the way we talk and the way we act. So friends, what are the characteristics of personality is then? Number one, personality is what one is. This means that personality traits are developed in each individual up to a stage in life, after that they get stabilized and on the other hand, one cannot borrow any other's personality traits. Whatever is visible is what is inside a person. Number two, personality of each individual is unique. Even the identical twins are of not same in the personality characters. Number three is personality is dynamic and not static. That is personality trait, though selective, present in each individual, get brushed up from time to time. Though there cannot be any new addition to the personality traits, however, each trait can be brushed up and changing at times. Number four is personality functions as a unified whole. Each person's personality expression is the sum total of what one has and one cannot hide one's traits in totality while interacting with others. Number five, personality is the product of both heredity and environment. An individual inherits personality traits by birth and simultaneously those traits are nourished through upbringing. Then further, the socio-cultural and economic environment also contributes to development of certain personality traits. Number six, personality is true and true social. The personality traits of an individual get nourished and brushed up into social forces and interactions. Number seven, personality is continuously adjusted itself to the environment. Though personality traits of an individual are generally inherited at birth, those traits get influenced by environment and get adjusted to changing environment from time to time. Number eight is, in rare cases, personality influence the environment. Largely, one gets influenced by the environment factors or forces, but sometimes dominating personalities to an extent influence the environment surrounding them. Then number nine is, personality traits are not for nothing. There is a purpose in every individual's personality. Accordingly, one fixes the goals of life and tries to achieve those. Number 10 is personality is self-consciousness. We do not attribute personality to animals. Human beings have mind to things, so human personality is a thinking process. Though animals do not have such things, even individuals need to be made aware of their traits and abilities and act accordingly. Now friends, we'll discuss about the development of personality. The, the development of personality has got a sequential aspects. These aspects include self-concept, motivation, attitude and values. Now friends about self-concept. The development of personality of an individual is to a great extent dependent upon his view about him or him herself. The emergence of a positive self-concept is likely to lead to a well-developed, harmoniously developed personality. It is therefore important that the children are made to learn from the very beginning, develop positive self-concept which is socially desirable. The child's perception and despair or view of him or herself is called self-concept. A newborn infant finds 
the world a confused mass as he or she grows up begins to differentiate. He or she slowly begins to distinguish between what belongs to him or her. He or she reacts to the world which he or she perceives. The perception of oneself changes with maturity. With the changes in perception, behavior also changes. Praise and blame, reward and punishment and the personality of the teacher influences the self-concept of children. Lives of great men provide motivation for developing positive self-concept and therefore students should be asked to study their lives. Thus the teacher should guide them to set realize, realistic goals which are in accordance with their reach to attain them. Setting unrealistic goals is likely to develop frustration. Now next is your motivation. The term motivation refers to the arousal of tendency to act to produce one or more effects. Modification is the process of arousing, sustaining and regulating activity. Now friends, there are some classroom motivation procedure or different techniques which a teacher should always follow. First is attractive physical environmental condition, which first of all the teacher should attend to the physical condition of the classroom. There should be no distracting factors in and around the classroom. Noise, strong light and some undesirable scenes often distract the attention and do away with the interest. Abnormal temperature is also a disturbing element. Monotony creates boredom. The room should be so ventilated and tastefully decorated. There must be flower plants in the school campus. Cleanliness should be stressed adequately. Number two of motivational technique which a teacher needs to follow is sublimation of innate impulses. Most of the behavior of small children is directly by their innate impulses. Children are very curious by nature. They like to do many things. Every new and strange things attract them. An efficient teacher will always stimulate the impulse of curiosity. He will always start the lesson by exhibiting some new and strange aspects of the same. Similarly, children like to construct things. The teacher should encourage the children to learn by constructing and creating things. Number three is stimulus variation by the teacher. This is one of the very important motivating factor for a teacher inside the classroom. So it has been generally observed that children are not able to attend to one thing for a very long period. The effectiveness of the teaching learning process depends to a great extent on the stimulus variation used by the teacher behavior. Some of the common teacher behavior in the stimulus which can be cited here. For example, teacher's movement, then teacher's gesture in the classroom, changes in speech pattern, changes in sensory focus, changes in postures and so on. These may be classified as number one positive verbal reinforcement, then number B positive non-verbal reinforcement, then C negative non-verbal reinforcement, then negative verbal reinforcement. Now friends positive and verbal reinforcements are like the teacher saying good, fair, excellent, correct, etc. Positive non-verbal reinforcements includes teachers friendly at movements towards the pupils, teachers friendly look towards the students, then teacher writing students response on the blackboard. Then friends negative nonverbal. This comprises gestures, sneering, frowning, expression of annoyance, impatience, etc. Then negative verbal reinforcement is wrong, saying teachers wrong, no, no good, poor, like that. Number five is extrinsic learning reward and punishment. Now this is also a very important motivating factor for a teacher which he or she can use inside the classroom. The process of giving rewards and punishment is known as reinforcement. Rewards whether material or symbolic and psychological enhance satisfy child safety, belonging, esteem, needs and as such are capable of acting as incentives. 
Material rewards seem to work better for poor children and symbolic rewards seem to work better for children from rich homes. Now the motivating factor friends is pleasure and pain. This is again one of the very strongest motivating factor for a teacher whom he or she, which he or she can use in the classroom. According to the oldest theory of behavior, pleasant experience which give satisfaction are sought after and painful experiences are avoided by an individual. This theory has direct implication in classroom teaching learning and the teacher must provide pleasant and satisfying experiences to the students so that they are motivated for further learning. Number seven is attainable goals. There should be a goal to be reached in every lesson. Only then the student can endeavor to continue their efforts to a particular direction. The goal must be made clear to students. So friends, number eight motivational factor is experience of success. In this regard, teacher play a very important role in creating motivation inside the classroom. Experiences of success motivates a child to continue an activity. In this regard, the teacher should make school work both curricular and co-curricular sufficiently varied so that each pupil has a chance to experience success at his own level. He must ensure frequent and regular experience of success or reinforcement throughout all phases of learning but particularly during the earlier and more difficult phases. Number nine is Competition and cooperation. Competition is a spar of activity, but competition on individual basis is likely to be unequal and therefore threatening to some students. So competition between groups make it possible to spread the share of success or failure. Cooperation too provides motivation since it provides social situation to learners when they find satisfaction of their acceptance and belonging needs. Number 10 is knowledge of progress. Pupils knowledge on the, of their progress of how well they are moving towards their goal is very effective for the motivation. It also helps them to create efforts. Individual progress chart not only inform a child about how he is doing but also keep the child involved in learning activities. Next important factor is novelty. The striving towards self-actualization make pupils search the new and the different. Field trips, excursion, dramatics, sports, literary activities, etc. helps the pupil for developing self-actualization by providing them opportunities. But their safety needs require that they should know beforehand when and how the new experiences will be provided. Then friends, individual difference of the children. This is one of the very important factor that should be realized by a teacher always when he is inside the class. Children have different interests and capabilities. All the children cannot be motivated alike for all the lessons at all the time. It is the duty of the individual to discover individual interest and capabilities of children to motivate them accordingly. Next is about teaching skills. Teaching skill of the teacher greatly influence the motivation in students. It is not easy to give an exact number of teaching skills involved in motivating students in the class. Commonly identifying skills of teacher learning progresses may be like skills in stimulus variation, skills in the use of blackboard or the chalkboard, skills in handling teaching aids and other equipments, skills in non-verbal cues, skills in reinforcement, skills in the use of illustrations and examples, skills in the exposition of the subject matter, skills in explanation, skills in encouraging group discussion, skills in plant repetition, skills in throwing out conclusions from the students and skill in teachers liveliness and so on. Next friend is teacher's own motivation and interest in teaching. It depends upon 
the teacher's own interest and motivational factor which definitely create motivation in the students. The teacher must be interested in what he is teaching and in the children whom he is teaching. If he is not interested in the work himself, he can never motivate the class. It may be said that a teacher who has been teaching the same subject to the same classes for a number of years tends to lose the interest in that class. But this is not the fact. The subject matter may be the same, but the children may not be the same and children are not the same. Even the same subject matter can be changed and developed and can be more interesting to motivate the children. Next friends, the factor is the attitude. One of the chief objective of education is the development of desirable attitude in the students. The students must develop several attitudes like attitudes towards the studies, attitudes towards the friends, self and certain ideals etc. An attitude is dispositional readiness to certain institutions, persons or objects in a consistent manner which has been learned and has become one's typical mode of response. For example, one's views towards the food or drink or sports or maths or democracy are the attitudes. It includes certain aspects of personality such as interest, appreciation and social conduct. An attitude is learned or adopted. Now friends about values. A value stands for ideals men live for. They are the guiding principles of life. Next friends it's about values. A value stands for ideals men live for. They are the guiding principles of life which are conducive to one's physical, social and mental health. Values may be defined as what we believe professed values and what we practice operational values and what we learn from experience in order to adopt and new traditions received from the past traditional values. Now some values which I can cite here is about beauty, goodness, cooperation, courage, citizenship, comparison, devotion, discipline, duty, non-violence, peace, national consciousness, justice, simple living, sympathy, self-respect, obedience, etc. Now friends, what are the ways and means of inculcating values? What is the role of education here? So the role of education in this regard could be firstly about morning assembly that take place inside the school. Before starting the teaching work in the school, it is very necessary to hold a morning assembly and its duration should be between 15 to 20 minutes. No doubt there should be a prayer in the assembly but besides prayer there should be the provision for religious discussions, patriotic songs, moral lectures by the teachers and students and according to the times. Such types of provision can be made in the morning assembly. Then is about by compulsory subject. By compulsory subject here it means that Moral education should be given the name of a subject and it should be taught in the class like any other subjects which are taught in the class. This moral subject should contain the substance of all the religious and not the knowledge of any particular religion. It should contain those principles which are the essence of all the religious equally. There should be a provision of at least two periods in a week for this subject in the timetable, redesigning of curriculum and in order to provide value education there is a need of redesigning of curriculum. In some subjects some changes should be made in such a type that these subjects can be taught keeping in view the social, moral and cultural and national values. It is possible through the subjects like history, geography, social studies, language, literature, art and music etc. Now about the extension lectures. Such scholars should be invited to the institution from time to time which have an inseparable relation with the moral subjects. These invited scholars should express their views on the subjects of human interest under extension lectures. 
then by skits and dramas in the school. Value education can be provided quite conveniently through the medium of skits and dramas in the school. The subject matter of skits and dramas should be related to moral and cultural values. The birthdays of those great men should be celebrated in the schools which preached higher values all through their lives and presented their ideal form before the society. For example, the birthdays of Mahatma Gandhi, Guru Nanak, Guru Gobind Singh, Lord Buddha, Jawaharlal Nehru and Dr. Radha Krishnan should be celebrated in the school. Celebration of their birthdays would give inspiration to the students and they should try to follow the path shown by them. So next is celebration of international days. International days should be celebrated in schools as the World Peace Day, Human Rights Day, etc. By doing so, there would be the development of world brotherhood among the students. Then the use of mass media. Maximum use of mass media should be made to give value education to the students. The use of newspapers, journals, doodarshan and radio etc. can produce awakening among the students towards values. Next is friends, national service scheme. The spirit of social service can be inculcated among the students through the medium of national service scheme by doing work related to service moral and social and cultural development can be made in the students then some value oriented magazines whatever magazines are published by the school the articles which are compiled in it should be in such a manner through which the students could get some education and lead to their character development the teachers in this regard should play a very important role in the classroom as well as outside the classroom Next is about the role of the teacher. We have already discussed the role of the teacher in this respect. Whatever a child learns after coming into this world, he learns by imitating others. For students, the teacher is their ideal and they copy the lifestyle of their teachers. The teacher should present their ideal before the students for the inculcation of these values among the latter. The attitude of the teacher should be liberal. A teacher can provide value-oriented education only when he himself has faith in it. There should be no difference between what a teacher says and what he actually does. It should always be the endeavor of the teacher that whenever there is something in the context of value, he should at once elucidate the same and should give emphasis to value-oriented education. Teacher is the only personality in the society through which the social, moral, cultural and spiritual development of the student is possible. Therefore, friends, the personal life of the teacher should be the above board, neat and clean and worthy to be limited so that he is able to leave a lasting impression and imprint of his personality on his students. Now, some of the important guidelines for teachers are as under. Teacher can pay attention of the students with the help of the following. One of the best method of developing personality is to pay due attention to children. The quality of the attention also counts. If children ask a question, the teacher should try to answer it immediately. And they are important as they need to be paid attention. If the teacher brushes them aside, they get the impression that teachers are ignoring them and they lose confidence. The teacher should be fair, frank, honest and loving but firm and consistent. Rules too gentle are seldom obeyed, too severe seldom executed. Discipline should be tailored to children's needs. For example, children should be impressed by actions which speak much louder than words. The teacher should be careful about how he lives. He may be the only textbook some of the children will ever read. Now the fun made by the teacher is also a very important factor. The teacher must have fun with them once in a while. This is also education in its own way like inspiration. The secret of providing inspiration as a teacher is to know what he is doing, love what he is doing and believe in what he is doing. 
Now love, it is a popularly saying that love the child and child will love you. Hate him and he will hate you. So patience is also one of the very important factor for a child to be trained by love take a lot of patience. Regarding praise, children thrive on praise. It is of the most important parts of teaching. If a child lives with criticism, he learns to condemn. If he lives with praise, he works hard to top capacity. It is important to praise a child for his good behavior than it is to scold him or for bad behavior. Understanding is also a very important factor for the teacher. To understand children, a teacher must first understand himself. It may be emphasized that the teacher is not concerned with one of the other aspects of the development of personality of a child. He is expected to be all things to all the pupils. A physician concerned about their physical health, a mental hygienist leading them carefully to sound mental health, a philosopher guiding them painstakingly in their search for truth, a moralist assist and encouraging them to acquire goodness, an artist helping them to find beauty. He must be a minister, ministering to their every need. Such a ministry calls for dedicated service. So friends, this was about the development of personality that we have discussed. I hope you will be further motivated to learn about this chapter or this unit more. Thank you very much.